Welcome to Start Smart for Paddlers, a presentation on paddlecraft safety. Hi, I'm Sam Young, skipper of Ship 378, the Dawn Treader, operating on West Point Lake on the Chattahoochee River, Georgia and Alabama state line. Paddle sport, such as with canoes and kayaks, muscle boats as we call them, is growing rapidly into one of America's popular outdoor activities. We want everyone to be safe and to have fun on the water. Every paddler is responsible for their own safety and needs knowledge and skills to be able to survive and have fun in this potentially hazardous environment. This presentation contains useful information on safety and helpful tips on boating skills. Don't let accidents happen and make safety a priority. Remember, you're in command. A few safety tips can help you enjoy a great paddling trip. Think for a moment. What do you need to be safe, be comfortable, and have fun? Boating can be safely enjoyed, but accidents do happen. Carry maps or charts. Also, carry map or compass if you need one. Before getting underway, get the latest weather report. Start checking the weather a week before you go. Plan an emergency course of action and leave it with a friend or a relative or your outfitter or the local marina. This is your float plan. Our ship fills one out an online form provided by the Coast Guard to include with our tour plan every time we go out. Most of us know or remember what happened on 9-11. Because of Homeland Security's concern, many federal properties now have security zones around them. Protection zones direct boaters to stay at least 100 yards away from all large Navy vessels, as well as installations, piers, and other security zones. Gotta go slow when you're within 500 yards of them. Five football fields. Beware of this around places like Panama City, Florida. Make sure you know your local restrictions, too help keep America safe. The Boy Scouts Outdoor Code and principles of Leave No Trace apply on our waterways too. Principle 3. Dispose properly. Principle 4. Be considerate of other visitors. Paddle as far away from fishermen as practical. Besides avoiding being hooked, you're less likely to scare their fish away. Cross busy waterways only when necessary and as quickly as possible. Right angles are best. Motor boaters around here may run you over. Also, respect landowners. Don't trespass. Don't beat your boat just anywhere you want to. Don't litter. In fact, pick it up when you find it. Leave the area cleaner than when you found it. Remember, people on larger, faster boats may not be able to see you, so stay alert and be ready to move out of danger. Don't forget to look behind you. All boats are required to display proper navigation lights in conditions of low light visibility, like night, fog, and rain. Low visibility is when you can't see more than seven-tenths of a mile. For canoes and kayaks, a bright flashlight will usually do. Shine it at any boat in the area so that you'll know they're there. But don't bet on it. Stay out of their way. The Coast Guard rules of the road require every boat to have a lookout on inland and international waterways. For small boats, you're it. The Coast Guard also requires all boats to carry a whistle or other loud sound signaling device. These are used to communicate with other boats or signal for help. The recognized emergency signal is five or more sharp blasts on a whistle or a horn. Paddling with a group is much safer than traveling alone. In fact, the Boy Scouts safety afloat rules require you to have a buddy boat. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Ventures and Sea Scouts are unlikely to drink alcohol on their outings. However, expect other boats are not as wise. Watch out for them. However, you might be taking prescription medicines that cause you not to think right. If you can't, stay out of small boats. You need your wits about you at all times. Sea Scouts promise to guard against water accidents. Always wear your life jackets. Paddle boats tip over easily, so you need to practice emptying and getting back in them. Meanwhile, you'll be in the water, which is often shockingly cold. Think about this. If you're knocked into cold water, you need to spend your first minute getting your breathing under control to avoid inhaling water. Also, have you ever tried to get a life jacket on in the water? Many can't do it. Those who do take about three minutes. You only have about ten minutes to do anything meaningful in cold water. Don't spend the first four minutes just trying to get your life on. If you can, you need all the energy. You need all your energy to help your boat crew get you back in the out of the water. Besides, 
Gulping in a little water can cause you to start choking. You may be experiencing cramping. Or perhaps you're injured. All these things make swimming difficult. Wear a life jacket properly. It's good insurance. This is such a simple safety measure. Wear your life jacket properly. There are five types of personal flotation devices. It's important to understand the trade-offs and strengths and weaknesses of each type to choose the correct one for your intended use. Type 1 life jackets are intended for offshore use. These are large, bulky jackets. They will turn most unconscious people face up. Because of their bulk, they aren't recommended for paddlers. Who would want to? Type 2 PFDs are nearshore buoyancy vests, the familiar horse collar life jacket. These will turn some unconscious people face up. Because they're generally uncomfortable for extended wear, they aren't recommended for paddlers either. Type 3 PFDs are flotation aids, also called swim vests. These jackets are designed so wearers can place themselves in a face-up position in the water. They are uncomfortable, I mean excuse me, they are comfortable and allow a good range of motion. They are recommended for paddlers. Don't forget to zip all zippers and connect all buckles. Also, wear it right. On my ship, if any crew member doesn't wear their life jacket right, everything stops. Everyone gets out of the water and stands by the dock and takes their PFD off. Then we all jump in the water and try to put our PFD back on. Failure to wear a life jacket affects the entire boat crew. Just wear it right. Type 4 PFDs are throwable devices. Sea cushions and life rings can be thrown to a swimmer. Since they aren't worn on the body, they aren't recommended for paddlers. Type 5 PFDs are special use life jackets. They include rescue vests, some types of inflatable life jackets, and other life jackets with specific applications. Depending on their design and application, they may share some attributes with other types of PFDs, so they may be appropriate and recommended for certain uses by paddlers. Note, read the label. They can only be used the way the Coast Guard says they can be. Just so you know, Sea Scouts, Ventures, and Boy Scouts aren't allowed to use them. There are inflatable Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 PFDs. On our ship, they are not allowed. They rely on water to activate the CO2 cartridges, which may not reliably go off. Besides, Scouts I know prefer to spend more time in the water than on the boat. Watch out for sharp objects around the shore. Be careful of the bottom of the water, too. Always wear shoes that will stay on your feet when you have to swim. River sandals, running shoes, or wet booties work best for paddlecraft. Wear clothes for the conditions. Clothes you might have to swim in. If the weather is sunny, wear sunscreen and a hat. Sunburn is an unnecessary pain. On rainy days, an insulation layer and rain jacket can keep you comfortable and enjoying the trip. And no matter what the weather, take and drink plenty of water. You dehydrate quickly while boating. If the water is very cold, or if the air plus water temperature don't add up to at least 120 degrees Fahrenheit, you may want to wear a wetsuit or a paddler's dry suit. Hypothermia is a very real danger, even on nice, warm, sunny days. Know the HELP and huddle techniques. HELP stands for Heat Escape Lessening Posture. Just curl up in the fetal position and bob in the water. This is only possible with a life jacket on. If two or more of you are in the water, share each other's warmth. Get into a huddle. These methods can save you if your shore is not within swimming distance. Stay with your boat. It offers useful flotation is more visible to rescuers than a swimmer is. Consider taking along a change of dry, warm clothing in a waterproof container just in case you get wet. Paddlecraft easily tip over. If you're properly dressed and prepared, capsizing or swamping doesn't have to become an emergency situation. Getting into canoes and kayaks can be challenging. Bring the boat parallel to the shore or pier. Then, always try to keep three points of contact with the boat, such as both hands on a foot or both hands in your seat. Move slowly and keep your weight low. If two folks are getting into a two-person boat, the heavier one usually gets in the back first, while the front paddler holds and steadies the boat. Then, the stern paddler steadies the boat while the bow paddler gets in. The order is reversed when getting out of the boat. Moving, it, moving around in canoes and kayaks can be an unsettling experience. Don't rock the boat, baby! 
Minimize movement. If you must move, keep your weight low and balanced over the center line of the boat. Remember, three points of contact at all times. Your shoulders should stay within the sides to keep the boat from tipping over. If you lean over the edge of your boat, you can kick it out from under you. Any gear, such as bags, coolers, and that sort of thing, should be tied down and kept low and in the middle of the boat for improved stability. Watch out for weather changes. It can and will sneak up on you. There's nothing like knowing the weather is changing fast and you're powerless to do anything about it because you're stuck on the water. Guess how I know. Listen to your weather radio throughout the day. Check the weather before and during the float trip. Wind can blow you off course and form large waves. Large and fast boats can form large waves too, called wakes. When you come across waves, try to avoid hitting them with your boat sideways. Angle your boat across the wave for the driest ride, about 45 degrees. Of course, other weather conditions like torrential downpours and lightning can be dangerous too. Fog and darkness are also hazards. Stay alert. Before conditions deteriorate, get off the water. Avoid extreme conditions because high water, wind, and fast currents are dangerous. Beware. Even gentle currents can cause problems like strainers. These are trees, rock sieves, piers, docks, anything allowing water to flow through them. Gentle currents can generate enough force to hold and trap boats and people against these strainers, so they are serious hazards. Avoid them. Fast water may create waves, eddies, and powerful currents that require training and practice to navigate. Even gentle rivers may contain hazards, such as low head dams. We call them drowning machines. If you get caught in one, the chances of getting out of one are slim to none. These are dams with water flowing over the top. They have powerful churning currents on the downstream side, even when the drop is only a few inches. Since these can be invisible upstream, the paddler must be familiar with the intended route. Check guidebooks, maps, outfitters, the paddlers for information on possible habits. Remember, when in doubt, get out and scout. Build confidence by practicing rescue te techniques on a nice day in a safe environment. Our Sea Scouts spend June and July doing just that with rowboats, canoes, sailboats, and motorboats at our local scout camp. Paddlecraft are usually small, light, and easily tipped. Capsizing is common. When you do tip over in currents, keep your body flat with the surface of the water, with your feet up. Backstroke to shore. Stand up only when the water is knee deep or less to avoid foot entrapment in underwater rocks or strainers. If you're close to shore, just swim your boat to the edge, dump out the water, get back in, and you're on your way. If you're too far out to swim your boat to shore, get your companions to help you empty and re-enter your boat. A little planning and practice can keep capsizing and swamping from becoming a big emergency. Federal requirements include carrying personal flotation devices, sound producing devices, compliance with navigation rules, and not boating under the influence of alcohol or dangerous drugs. Some states may also require having a boat registration, a launch use permit, an anchor, extra paddle, or attend boating safety classes. Alabama is different from Georgia. Florida is different from them both. The Boy Scouts of America also require us to carry and do things the federal and state laws don't. It's your responsibility to check with Marine Patrol officers for regulations that apply in your area. These officers can also provide valuable reports on water conditions and other useful information. Boat defensively. Watch out for other boats. You may know and follow the rules but other boaters may not. Look out. Paddling is fun. If you don't believe me, just ask my scouts. You'll be much safer and enjoy the sport more if you learn more about it. Educational videos and books and lessons are available from a variety of sources including your local US Coast Guard Auxiliary. If you happen to be a high school or a college student between the ages of 14 and 20, we do this as Sea Scouts. Outdoor activities are assumed risk sport. This presentation can't take the place of appropriate instruction for paddling, swimming, or life-saving techniques. Every effort has been made to make this guide as accurate as possible, but it's ultimately your responsibility to judge your own abilities and act accordingly. Enjoy your trip, and please, 
Wear your life jacket.